Let's start by putting on the warp. I'm using 8-8 cotton warp string and I'm double warping on my loom 66 total warp strings. If you're working flat on the table, use some painter's tape, roll it up and put a piece in each corner to really help secure your loom down to the table so that it doesn't shift around on you. Let's add some twining using the same string as the warp. Weave that in, tightening that twining as you go to lock in the warp strings and even them all out. Use your weaving comb to straighten out your twining. I'm leaving my twining about three and a half inches up from the bottom of my loom, but honestly, I could have had it a little bit lower, which would have made the weaving process easier because I wouldn't have been getting so close to the top of my loom. Add a few rows of plain weave. I'm doing three, and now we have a nice sturdy base. Grab some chunky yarn or string. I'm using seven millimeter cotton string. Using something 100% cotton or 100% wool is very important for this project because you don't want your pot holder to melt when you put something hot on it. Take that cotton string, thread it into your tapestry needle and weave it in over two warp strings followed by under six warp strings. Repeat that pattern the entire way across the warp. Create an arch, strum your warp and use your weaving comb to beat down the weft onto the base we wove in earlier. Next, grab a length of your cotton warp string. I like to use about three arms length at a time max because otherwise it just gets a little bit cumbersome while weaving. Use a second tapestry needle if you have one to weave in one row of plain weave. The pattern for this piece is something I like to call modified plain weave. We're actually going to be creating a pattern that looks more like basket texture, but it works just like plain weave. In the next row, we're going to be going under two warp strings and over six warp strings. This pattern is really great because you don't actually need a paper pattern for it. We're just repeating that back and forth. When you're weaving with cotton string, if it seems like the cotton string is getting tighter and tighter, take a minute to untwist it just a little bit. This can just happen and it just makes for a messier edge. So it's worth it to take the time to untwist it. On this edge, when the string is going over the far two warp strings, what we wanna do when we're going back around is we wanna grab this weft string here. So you can see that instead of just placing it over top like this, I'm actually grabbing that in to help bring it up to the next row. On this edge with the thick string coming under, we are going to leave the thinner string up above and go around it like this. I forgot my tabby row between my thick string rows. So all I did was sort of lift up that weft so that I can get back in there with a thinner string to do my tabby. When you run out of string, simply cut more lengths of it, thread up your needles, but instead of starting on the same side you left off, start on the opposite side so that you don't have as many ends to tuck in right next to each other later. If you're like me and you had to start by going under warp strings with your new string, that's okay, but instead of just leaving it hanging out here, take that end and loop it back around those two strings. Then you can just keep on weaving as normal. After you've woven your piece to the desired length, mine is about eight inches long, we're going to finish off this piece the way that we started it. So we're going to do three rows of plain weave plus one row of twining. Always start your twining on the opposite end of where your tail is. So that means you're gonna have to cut a new piece in this case. So I've cut a new piece and I'm starting my twining. The twining is complete, but we're not done yet. We need to flip this over and tuck in all the ends. Whew. And you're probably gonna find that there's cotton dust everywhere. So I'm trying to like not make it go too much into the air. And I'm just gonna push it out of the way. It'd be better just to vacuum this up, but I don't have a vacuum right now, so. Flip over your loom and bring all the ends from the front to the back. 
Using a plastic yarn needle with a nice big eye, we're going to tuck in the ends. And I'm going to basically sew in the end to these wefts where there's a shorter span than the longer one so that it'll stay a little bit more securely. I'm gonna make sure I don't pull that too, too tight. And then I can trim off the excess, being careful not to trim off any of the weft. Next, I'm grabbing a smaller yarn needle. This one is just metal and I'm going to thread my thinner string into that. And I'm going to do the same thing, but with this smaller needle into the smaller sections. I'm just grabbing one or two wefts from this section at the top. And then I'm gonna just take this down the side through these thicker strings and cut off the excess. But for the ones out in the middle, we don't really have much to go through. So I'm just gonna grab whatever I can here along the side. We'll go down a few strings. And that's good there. Before we take this off the loom, we're going to make a line so that we can cut it off nice and straight. Make sure your tails are at least half an inch long. I'm gonna go a little bit longer and go with one inch. Then I'm going to turn the loom around and do the same thing on the other side. Using a sharp pair of scissors, I'm going to cut this off the loom just inside the line that we just marked. I'm not pulling this off the loom, I'm going to hold it like this because it's just gonna be a little bit easier to keep it on the loom while I cut the mark. We can set our looms aside and if you want, you can brush out those little fringes to make them a little bit floofier. But we're not done yet. We need to trim off some of that fuzz that we just created to make everything look nice and crisp. Click right here to watch our woven coaster tutorial next.